we're back again. So still working on the engine, putting it together, um, as you could probably tell by the title. Anyway, right now I'm going to work on uh, getting the piston rings on and hopefully um, get the uh, cylinders, uh, pistons put into the cylinders. So I needed a generic rig compression tool and I got this one. So here's how I do it. So it doesn't really matter um, which piston I take right now to work on first, whether it's one, two, or three. That part doesn't really matter. So this is what we boxed up in the last video. So it gives me an extra ring in the, in the package. So this was the uh, five millimeter ring. I used a 4.7. That ring goes in the bottom of the sleeve. Uh, actually goes in the block to protect the bottom of the sleeve, keep the oil and water from swapping places. So this, like I said, it doesn't matter, but this is number two piston. And I could tell from the dots right here on the side. You're gonna have compression ring, compression ring, oil ring. That's how that works. So it happens to tell you how this kind of goes. It actually labels out the rings for you in a little convenient little package. Yeah, I start from the oil ring, which this one is actually all together. Other ones come in three pieces. It'll be a thin, lower metalish one, and then a spring, and then the third one. But this one kind of comes all in one. So when you put these on, you just kind of gently Put them on. There are ring tools that spread them out, but I don't use those. I'm actually going to put the first one on. Now, these do have a little angle to them, and this one tells you sometimes they have a little notch curve or something in them, um, but this says top, so it goes to the top. To make sure it means top, top. Yes. Okay, so I'm putting these on first so that when I put my oil ring on or my subsequent rings after the first one, it doesn't have to fall into a groove. I gotta pull it out, put it into another groove. So, and these you just gently open. Damn, that actually left a little scratch on it. All right. So that's the first ring. And that's the dog bumping the camera. So this one also, this is your second compression ring. So this one has a little notch. If you can see that, I don't know if the camera's gonna zoom in on that. So it has a little kind of funny notch there. Um, and that goes up. This one's not as tough to open up as the last one was. If you have the ring opening tool, you just close it almost like a pair of these. When you close it, it opens up the ring and you just slide it over. And I'm just trying to push down the previous ring to get that one past it, and it's past it. I just need to get it in its spot now. And the last one. Okay. That wants to pop out, so I'm gonna put this spring in first. And the ring. So it just has a groove in there for the spring itself. I'll make sure I have it right. Okay. I'm just trying to tuck that spring in there. That's it. All right, so all the rings are in. And now if you see, They all have gaps on them, obviously. So when you put these gaps in, you have to stagger them, just so that 
the gases don't get by. Oil, gases, all that stuff. Don't escape the cylinder. So, I guess I can put it in now. So, this thing just loosens up by pushing that button. Let's see if I like this. Yeah. So then you just compress it. Try not to let it twist. You need to get it nice and tight. All right, and it even has these little bumps on it to keep it from sliding into the cylinder as well. So I'm gonna put the bearing, whoops, the bearings on there. Again, making sure they are 0 0.10 because the crank has been ground. Okay, so this is number two by the two dots. This is the front, so we're gonna go like that. And I'm gonna slip this bearing right in here. Okay, there we go. Lube. Okay, so I'm improvising my oil can. Just use it by hand. Just get a little lube in here, number two cylinder. This is just engine oil. Well, since I can't figure out how to use my microphone correctly, I'll fill this part in. You're just putting this thing in nice and gently. And see those little flanges hold on so the ring compressor doesn't go in. There we go. That's how it works. Let me get these other two done real quick and get them in there and then I'll show you the flip the engine over, torque the crank, uh, and then torque, torque the main crank, and then torque these connecting rods. All right, so Got the pistons in. They're all in. Yes, they're at different sizes because I still have to hook them up to the crankshaft. So I'm gonna spin this thing around, get them hooked up to the crankshaft, and then retorque the main caps on the crankshaft. So this is what we look like in here. Here's the connecting rods, and this is the journal where they need to actually hook up to. And I don't expect them to be on, but I'm gonna have to do a little movement of the crank back and forth to get them to seat on there. If I push too far, the pistons will come out and I'll have to reseat the rings again. So I don't wanna do that. Number two, making sure my dots are the same. And I'm not tightening these up right now, but I am just gonna snug them down some. We're back at it. Um, it's been a few days since, uh, you know, a couple seconds ago. And, uh, man, I just, I, uh, I guess COVID snuck up on me and finally got me for the first time. Uh, it, was a, it was a rough ending to that last little segment there. So I was uh, able to, uh, I had to take a few days off from coming out here and working. And I was able to come out and do some work on the engine. I got the crankshaft retorqued. I got the rod bearing, uh, the, the rod, yeah, the rod bearings on there, uh, torqued and all. Sorry, the dog's off camera trying to shake hands with me. Pistons, everything are all in there. I got the oil pan on. Started putting some of the plugs in, the uh, like the oil galley plugs. Then I ran out of the right size plug, so I got some more. So that's kind of where I'm going to start today is working on getting these galley plugs in because I can't do anything else until I get these plugs in. They're actually stopping all my work. So also there's a lot of background noise right now. It's, we're getting one of our uh, normal evening, oh, afternoon uh, Florida showers. So it's kind of bringing some wind this time. So anyway, that's what you're gonna hear in the background a little bit. Let's get started. 
these are the plugs I was starting to work on here. These are, these are oil right here. This is an oil galley that just runs right along the side of this engine. I ran to the local parts store to get these. And with that, I've just got to say, the time's done changed. You know, with uh, all the mail order, everything, I'm able to order a lot of the stuff because I'm thinking ahead of time what I need. But since these plugs are a showstopper, I decided I need to run to the parts store. You would think that the local parts store would be quite helpful like they were at least when I was growing up. I would run down there and get lots of information from the parts people and ideas and stuff. And I ran into a guy at the parts store and he said he found a part number and stuff for these, but he, he didn't know where they were at. So I said, okay, you gonna go look for them? He said, no, I don't know where they're at. I said, oh, is there somebody else you can ask? He said, yeah, but by next time, he's getting a little snotty with me. He said, yeah, lady over there, but she's busy. I was like, have you heard the word excuse me? You know, maybe you could say, excuse me, do you know where these are at? I'm trying to help a customer. So. I actually asked the kid, so what do you do when there's a part that's listed in the computer, but yet you don't know where it's at? I mean, you work here, so you should have a general idea where your parts are at in this in the store, you know? And uh, he said, ah. all he kept saying is, I don't know where it's at. I don't know where it's at. So I asked him repeatedly, can you go find it? He said, no, because I don't know where it's at. I mean, what's, what is the problem? That's sad, that's all I have to say. I'm not even gonna go, ranting on that but needless to say i left that place and i told that kid it must be a generational thing or an extremely laziness kind of thing because at least back in the day or when someone's really trying to find something and you're in a sense of customer service you're going to actually help serve them not just stare at the computer and say i don't know where it's at that's sad anyway this is all I could find at a different part store. The guy actually looked for it. It's close, but I'm gonna have to mic this out to find out how close. Ah, so I can tell you right now, it's about half a millimeter too big. That's a, probably about an inch. Yep, it's an inch. I need 0.98 inch. We'll see what we could do with that. I was measuring the old one, so maybe there was some distortion from the old one, the way they had to pull it out. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping I could still press this in here. And I think I can. So let's find out if I can. I remember back in the day at the parts store where you could actually take any old engine, doesn't even have to, they don't even have to know what it is and they can, they can find the parts for it. I always thought that, you know, I grew up working on, on engines and stuff and I was a bit knowledgeable. I don't want to say a professional, far from it, but I was, somewhat knowledgeable about the parts and things that I need and what the parts are and you know at least basic operation of these things so I was building engines at least right around oh, right around the age of 20 was probably my first one that I did and I'd have no problem going to the parts store and they would help me out but such is not the case anymore okay okay so I just got a socket that fits inside of here and I'm gonna put some Loctite on this thing. Now, if this one were to leak or come out, it's in a bad spot to do that. It's gonna be under a plate that goes right here. And that's the reason I can't continue because I have to get this plug in here in order to put the plate in, in order to start putting the, the camshaft and all these other idler pulleys and stuff. I can't do anything. So I can't even do, I can't put lifters in, I can't put push rods in, can't do anything else until at least this one plug gets in. Sounds like the rain's dying down a little bit out there. It's, it's great, the sun's out and it's raining. It's kind of neat. It's better than a gloomy rain. All right, hopefully it's gonna work. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, I was scared to keep hitting hard with this and I'd drive out the bottom of it. I don't want that. 
That's not bad, man. Good. Okay, okay. So we're attacking some more galley plugs. I just got a variety pack. Not 100% what I wanted, but... I think this is one for here. Interesting. I ran a tap back through this one yesterday because I, I, thought, I felt the threads felt funny. I might just run the tap back through it again, make sure they're clean. That one goes in fine there. There's another funny looking one on the other side. Yay, and it works, thank the Lord. All right. So, if I can get these ones in their, in their new home, I'll be all right. And we can proceed, maybe even today. All right, half 13. This is part of the water jacket, so it's a little rusted. As I'm rebuilding this, the guy said they didn't blast this. They didn't bead blast this. Um, I actually took the head in just to get it soaked in their whatever stuff they soak them in and or heat them up and blast them, whatever. I wanted the block cleaned and they didn't. They did it by hand, they said. But I'm seeing like little bits of like these, they were supposed to chase each thread. So now I'm like getting more and more worried. They didn't chase this thread, that's for sure. Maybe they only chased important threads, I don't know. But to me, if it's threaded, they're all important. Some of this, well, not all that, because I only put, I, I did put a little uh, PB blaster in there yesterday. Yeah, you see all that crap flying out of there? You know, if it was just simply putting an engine together or whatever the case is, just doing the job, any job, things would go a lot faster. But when you have to go back, I mean, it, a job is not just a straightforward job. You know, there's always a little tweaking or something you got to do. And that's what seems to take a long time. I'm wondering if that's even a, uh, a water passage because I don't see it going anywhere. It just dead ends, like this one. Huh, okay. Anyway, it's accessible if I'm wrong. That may actually be a bolt where something else bolts onto this. So, let me clean out these threads. This is definitely an oil passage because I can see it through there and it lines up with these other ones. I feel that. <laughs> wow. Shoot. Seems interesting. It's a very interesting way it's going. Now I wish I would have put the plug in before I put these plugs in. <laughs> so I can clean it out some more. All right. Let's see if we can put this back in there. Or in there. That's feeling better. All right. One more plug. This one goes into a water passage for sure on this other side. I like to put lots of Teflon tape. Okay, I think that's good. I know y'all didn't see it, but it's okay. I think it's good. All right, now. Okay, next I am looking at the, uh, putting the cam in. Let me just give it a quick wipe. Make sure all my oil passages line up. They just cleaned this cam up. They didn't really do much work to it. Had a little scoring on it. Like more of scratches, not really scoring. Let's get all this stuff lubed. So when you install the cam, you really want to be straight. You don't want to be gouging the bearings as you're putting it in there. 
and it'll end up like this somehow. So you just want a nice and easy. Got that one. Got that one. That one. And one more. Oh, you know what? I so screwed up again, like I always do. I need to put the plate first and then the cam. So let's take this out. So I already have my gasket ready. I'm going to double check the fit and then I'm going to put some silicone on it I'm using the gasket, the right stuff, gasket maker thing, whatever you want to call it. All right, now that we have the gasket thing on there, let's get this on. Now it would be better if I could have put the oil pump on in the end, but uh, well, it just didn't work like that, all right? It will fit, I checked to make sure it'll still fit. So uh, I am able to get the front cover on with the oil pan the way it is. Worst comes to worst, I have to take the, oops, the oil pan down. But I hope we don't get to that point. I'm just going to push this in a little bit, then I'll take off some of the excess silicone. So I don't want this stuff in with the cam at all. Remembering all the silicone that was in this machine when I was taking it apart. Definitely don't want that again. Okay, uh, now I got to put the plate on, which is right here. So most of these holes are covered up with the plate that goes over this, which is this big old honky thing. Of course it goes like this. Now this is the access you have for the injection pump, but all this bolt in all around. It'll sit like this. But obviously I have a few more items to put on there first. And I think I'm gonna wait to get an injection pump before I button it all up completely because that requires a lot of timing on this end. And I think it'd be a lot easier to just time it with everything open instead of trying to deal with it through that one little hole. Another thing I was pondering was um, using my old, putting my old pump back in, get the timing on it, and then replace it with the new one when it comes in. I, th I think I have time to figure that out. All right, let's put the cam in now. Ugh. All right, I have no idea what just happened, but I lost my audio. Anyway, um, this is the head that I'll be installing here shortly. They uh, completely machined it, they decked it, they they changed everything. Everything on this head is new, uh, except for the block itself, the, the material itself. So I'm trying to put this thing on. I have the head gasket in place. This is extremely heavy, and I'm trying to step on the engine stand, trying to uh, get it on without hitting the gasket first because that could ruin it. So I made it a little bit challenging. Then it doesn't want to sit on the dowel pins exactly right. But I got it on. Now it's time to put the head bolts in. These head bolts go in a specific place so you have to make sure you get the right ones in the right place. Some are longer than others. Ah, but then I forgot the anti-seize. Um, this is some Permatex anti-seize. Just put on all the bolts on the threads. It kind of helps them to uh, torque uh, correctly. Keeps them from binding up. So just running the bolt heads down now, just to snug them. Then comes the torque. On the torque, not torque, but torque, it uh, you have to go in a certain order so you can get the head on evenly, uh, the pressure at least on evenly, and then from there you go in three different rounds of increasing uh, tightness, if you will, measured in foot-pounds. So essentially you're tightening it three different times. Just each time has greater pressure or tightness. So now I'm tightening it up to the second round. That was the first one. That's the second one. And I go around again. I don't know what happened, but the camera took a big old fall. I don't know what happened. Uh, you went for a fall. Hope you're okay. Now I lost track of where I was, so I'm gonna start back from the top. 
I know this one's done. All right, now 110. So again, I hope you enjoyed your trip. My tripod seems to have uh, one gimp leg and uh, keeps giving out, must be getting old. Here we go, 110. That's, that's pretty tight. The head is on. Now the push rods with lube. Now for the rocker arm assembly. I want to lube all this up first. I also want to dab some of this anti-seize on these uh, studs for the rocker arm assembly. Bam. Put all those there. Now let's get these bolted down. 47. I'm gonna first of all just snug them down. Just till it takes a little pressure right about there. All right, here we go, 47. Doesn't feel tight enough. Loctite. That's what I need. Thread locker. All right, forty seven. Go for the gold. Bam, that's done. I'm going to pop test my injectors before they are permanently installed, but I could set them in for now just to keep debris out of there. Kind of reach a stopping point for the day. I'm going to get the injectors, set them in there. Uh, it's about time for me to go take a nap so I can go to work. Um, we'll stop there and pick it up again. See you shortly.